attendees that we don't see right now. We see uh, participants on, on the top line and uh, the attendees uh, are not uh, part of the image we, we, we have uh, on the screen. I'm very happy that uh, we can, uh, regardless the problems and regardless impossibility to meet, we can still go on and uh, realize uh, this symposium uh, titled Forming the Reform. I will give you a very short uh, guide through this uh, evening, through this afternoon. And uh, it starts with, with a welcome speech of uh, Rector of Fine Arts Academy in Prague, Tomasz Vanek, that uh, is in between of us. Then uh, we will, uh, I will have a few remarks to the subject, to the topic of the symposium. And then there will be a, a short informal discussion of the participants, of five participants that you can see here. And uh, after this discussion that will last something like 20, uh, 30 minutes, uh, we will broadcast, broadcast their video contributions, uh, which last each of them approximately 15 to 20 minutes. So this is briefly the, the, the program of this uh, evening. So uh, let's, let's start with, with, with an opening and uh, uh, I would like to give a floor to Tomasz Wenig. Uh, we thank you, uh, dear symposium participants, dear guests. Uh, I would like to warmly welcome you to this online space, which we have recently been inhabiting, inhabiting and sharing more and more. We have come together in order to discuss the subject of art education, not only at uh, the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague, which is organizing this symposium, but also more broadly within the expansive institutional field of art education and in our thinking in general. The symp symposium title, Reforming the Reformat, was inspired by the specific situation and experience of our institution. Since the post-revolutionary 90s, when Professor Knizak implemented many changes at AVU, means Academy of Fine Arts in Prague, and invited new teachers to come to our school. This period has been central to AVU's modern uh, reforms. The fact is that no other school of higher education in our region underwent such radical changes as AVU did in 1989, and 1990. It has been 31 years since uh, that time the world has fundamentally changed and continues to change and we are participating in and following all these changes, asking ourselves how to follow up on them in contemporary art and education. Uh, students have fundamentally different requirements when it comes to the manner and intensity of passing uh, on knowledge and experience. Teachers demand different support for their teaching activities and more room for original teaching approaches. Staff are increasingly invited in and included into uh, the artistic thinking uh, of the school and of society. And this thinking defines the school's personality as such. I speak from personal experience. I studied at AVU in the 90s, 90s, I began teaching here more than 10 years ago and have guided it as a rector for seven years. This experience with the institutional world and the world outside the school has produced a need to repeatedly reflect on relationship process and positions, 
and on possibilities for their reconfiguration so that we can face the pressure of synthetic creativity coming from many areas of social and political life. If I were to say which questions have recently occupied my, the most, me the most as a teacher at, uh, and uh, rector of ABU, when, uh, then I would, would focus on these three. The first question is how to structure the teaching of artistic practice and theory in fine art different, differently than according to discipline. By discipline, I mean painting, sculpture, uh, the graphic art, arts, intermedia art, and new media. The second one, how to configure a system of teaching activities based on the principle of the uh, broad sharing of personal skills and experiences. Means how to be mutually beneficial during artistic development. And third one, how to work with the concept of talent, which is not easy to define as an evalu evaluation criterion. <clears throat> Does this mean that people who were accepted to a school on the basic of talent are guaranteed to have it, to have it during the entire period of study and afterwards as well? So I am interested in the answers to these questions and also in other subjects that don't directly answer my questions, but that offer new vantage points from uh, which these issues may be approached. I am looking forward to your presentation to short discussion and to the final picture that our symposium, Reforming the Reformat, will create. So may everybody find it time well spent and I wish you all, all uh, a good afternoon in good health and strange. Thank you and now I'm giving the words back to Pete and uh, ask him to continue. So Pete. Thank you Tomasz. Thank you. Thank you to Tomasz Vanik for his <laughs> Uh, I would like to follow a little bit uh, his, the, the line of his speech uh, because he recalled uh, the connection between the reflections on how to teach art that uh, took place uh, on, the, on the school ground uh, last year. Uh, the, the call for reflection posed by uh, this symposium extends a little bit this uh, question to very different type of institutions. On the one hand, uh, we invited you participants from classical academies, stone schools, uh, classical educational institutions. And uh, on the other hand, we, we find really important also to include in the, in the debate uh, uh, participants from self-organized and grassroots artistic educational groups and collectives. Uh, just a small historical uh, reflection on these two groups uh, of uh, institutions. I think we should not forget today that academies of art uh, started in the Renaissance times uh, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> they, they were uh, patronaged by uh, the kings or the aristocratic families. And uh, they actually forced or tried to be uni public universities even in the time of Renaissance, but they were refused as not being uh, complete as universities are, but being really focused on more manual and more skill-based uh, practice than classical uh, universities. On the other hand, uh, uh, the, the grassroots organizations historically started from the, let's say, opposite 
uh, opposite historical uh, historical movements and activities. They started from the reformations, from reforms, sometimes even very radical or revolutionary reforms. We can just uh, remind uh, the most famous 20th century uh, reformistic pedagogies, of pedagogies or critical pedagogies or radical pedagogies like, Pilo, uh, like Paulo Freire or Ivan Illich and many others who were actually related to deeper changes in the view on the function of education in society and thus, thus uh, politically changed the view uh, of the, the came fr from a change of view on the uh, functioning of society as such. I think only looking at all the contribution will show us what we can deduce from, from this comparison of, of stone schools and grassroots initiatives. Of course, uh, we are also interested uh, to, to kind of reflect and, and kind of think about uh, the way how uh, these, these classical academies are organized. Because if one looks at them further, closer, we can see that uh, they are very different system. Major uh, difference could be that there is uh, a master system that is based uh, on the unique individuality of an artist that transfer his or her uh, knowledge and capacity and uh, uh, passion to art to the to the uh, students. On the other hand, there are more uh, collective or structure or media based uh, uh, curriculas that these academies are uh, today uh, proposing. Then the second point of this symposia is also to bring together or to bring in relation the, 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 the changes and uh, so to say transformation in artistic practices in the last 50 years. Most namely uh, the, the brief of the, of the symposium is mentioning fluxes and conceptual art on the one hand and on the, on the second hand cer certain uh, revolution uh, of relation of art and theory. What this, uh, uh, what these two modes of uh, new artistic uh, practices, how they influence actually uh, the art education, whether the uh, school uh, or the, the schools that, that kind of reflect on uh, fluxes and conceptual art uh, are no longer requiring uh, cultivation of certain craftsmanship craftsmanship uh, and it doesn't only uh, touches uh, it touches all media actually not only uh, particular media but all media which used to be in the past the primary uh, aim of the art academies the, the second wave of the reform maybe or of this influence of artistic practices on the university uh, involve the gradual merge of contemporary theory, which can be uh, here we can mention institutional critique, gender theory, post-colonial theory, theory of moving image, post-human theory, global art history, etc. And how this new uh, uh, hybrid uh, concept of uh, theoretical art or intermedia art or uh, post-media art uh, is influencing the, the uh, educational institution. There could be even a hypothesis that, uh, that actually this new theoretical model of art didn't come from the practice to the educational system, but maybe it can be the opposite result, that it's a, it's, it's a kind of uh, product of uh, new education that influences actually the practice. So, so these are just a few lines of thoughts that, that kind of cross, uh, crossed uh, our minds when we were, uh, we were putting together, organizing the symposia and inviting you. Uh, just uh, to, to tell maybe one uh, organizational uh, detail, one organizational uh, uh, thing that uh, actually this is the first uh, afternoon or first evening. Uh, and uh, the symposium will continue every Thursday at four o'clock with the new video contributions and discussions with, with all uh, following uh, participants that are listed uh, that are listed in the invitation. And now I would be very happy to kind of uh, open up uh, a discussion 
actually uh, the idea we, we call it rather a hang, hangout or a kind of informal discussion so uh, i i have some question but first I, I would like to say that i'm very happy that that we could all gather of course it's not uh, a real uh, uh, substitution of a real meeting but in the same time uh, this informality, if it's possible, uh, could uh, replace a little bit something like uh, a discussion, normal discussion that uh, we would we would have uh, actually at a coffee table. So for first question, I had two questions, which are basically very, very simple. Huh? The first question is uh, for you participants uh, is the first question would be actually uh, when you when we talk on, on a regular symposia, we deliver our talk and then we leave the floor and very often it happened to me or I, I suppose that we have this the same that that we think ah yeah I forgot to say something something very important and uh, my first question would be whether you forgot to say something very important in your video contribution I know that it's very different right because you could prepare it you, you write down the notes etc but any, anyhow, I would ask this first question: If you have some some kind of uh, annex or some 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 uh, adding to the to the video contribution that you sent, or maybe some remarks about the media also, you know, uh, on which extent is it uh, sensible to deliver uh, a contribution by by a video? So, this is uh, first first question that I just uh, throw on the, on the floor. And please don't forget to unmute yourself. Um, yeah, if no one objects, I would just make one short remark. Um, hi, I'm Benjamin. Together with Clemens, I teach at the Fine Arts Academy in Leipzig. And we produce this little video that we will all see together. And I just wanted to add one, th I mean, there's, hundreds of things that could be added, of course. But this, just to say one thing, um, what I was already thinking about while doing it and what I was then thinking again when I watched the, the result is that in terms of public institutions, but also art education, I think it would have been good to add, to add the question of diversity. Um, it is not a coincidence that two white male dudes of more or less the same age represent the Academy of Fine Arts in Leipzig in this video. And I think it is um, not only because it is mandatory from the Ministry of Culture's point of view that we develop some sort of attitude towards the question of diversity, but also for our own political understanding um, of what we feel art education should contain. It would be good to add to the video um, some sort of a self-reflection or maybe even institutional self-criticism um, that in that respect um, there is something to be done at our academy. I'm aware that we are not the only academy which has that problem. But this is something that I would add to the video if there was um, a sequel to it. But Benjamin, you were mentioning in the video one one uh, one thing that is very unique at Leipzig, which is this uh, uh, special program for uh, for for uh, migrants that, that the academy is running. Right? Is it? Uh, yes. Can you maybe say a few words about it? Because it's I think it's quite uh, also I I know that it it exists in Vienna. But yes. it's something that uh, I, I, I find it uh, very interesting and, and, uh, and uh, would like to know more about it, if possible. Yeah, there's more. There's also other art, um, art academies in Germany who have similar programs, like Foundation Class in Berlin by C. Also, Hamburg has a similar program. And um, what we did at HGB, I think four years ago, 2000, I think late 2015 or 16 we were wondering in how far we could react to the situation that um, more and more people who came to Germany as refugees were also, of course, from that background, having studied art, design, or related um, subjects in the countries where they 
came from. And um, what we then um, came up with was a, is a structure which allows them to take language courses because this is just something that people need to go through in order to um, require to acquire a better, a safer status to also remain in Germany, ideally. And um, which is also important for them to, to become more integrated in the, not only in the job market, but also in the art scene over here. And it is also uh, meant to prepare them to study at our academy, to become full, fully enrolled students in this um, two year process. So it took quite some time to establish that. Now we have established it. It is also um, supported by the Ministry of Culture. And of course, at the same time, it is something that is targeted by um, members of the parliament from the right-wing party for obvious reasons. But I'm quite happy that we were able to install it and um, we are now also rethinking it because less and less refugees actually arrive in Germany. Um, but so far it has been running and it's, I think it makes, it still makes a lot of sense and it works. But maybe Clemens can add to that. Um, yeah, it's also in connection to um, other uh, programs in Germany in art academies, um, especially uh, some are um, fitting well together, like uh, uh, there are students who have been in the foundation class in Weissensee in Berlin and then uh, come to, Berlin, uh, to Leipzig and in Leipzig they are able then to step into the uh, like normal um, uh, a diploma study program. So um, we are quite happy about it and it's also quite um, successful for some uh, of the students who uh, get recognition, uh, success and um, can uh, get a diploma at the end um, probably. And so what I just wanted to, um, this is something that is kind of interesting because it's a new thing. And I think what I would add, um, as I, if I would have forgotten something, and there's a lot, um, that I invite um, the possibilities of founding something um, from scratch. So when you're in, in an institution and you're studying or you're, um, you're teaching suddenly, um, in like this traditional uh, art academy, um, you some, sometimes just think, uh, what if we could uh, do everything from scratch and build up a new school, you know? So, I mean, of course there's, um, there are things which are uh, good that they are already built and structured, but um, of course there's always this great moment of found, find, founding something uh, from scratch. That is, uh, I miss sometimes this uh, possibility. Maybe I can go on with uh, uh, the first question and uh, connect in a certain way to what was uh, said um, maybe very briefly, uh, I, uh, I, I will not uh, change radically what I said, maybe just the tone, because I think it will be much more productive if we could now discuss uh, and not record ourselves, but onto the questions uh, answered and also react to what uh, is said, because this uh, gives another dynamic and uh, the things are much more um, uh, in relations to the other, also in reflection. This, I think, uh, will be um, the, uh, something that uh, I was thinking because it's really monotone to talk to a, a screen and uh, uh, talk in a vacuum, as it said. But uh, OK, I have maybe two points uh, that I would like to emphasize. Uh, 
um, in, uh, uh, in Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, uh, um, we have uh, uh, already this possibility to include uh, refugees, but I don't think uh, that uh, a preparation period uh, is actually a generous uh, period because it's uh, years uh, of passing for those uh, people who actually has no legal structure. They stay there, but on a very precarious uh, um, uh, foundation. And that means uh, that uh, we are stealing more time of their life. Uh, so uh, uh, it will be more important for uh, um, the whole institutions of uh, the universities in general um, to rethink uh, also for the basis uh, of um, those uh, who study how uh, they can get uh, their uh, context uh, in terms of papers and everything regulated and not to be in the constant limbo and pressure that is uh, uh, actually chasing them also regarding money regarding uh, many possibilities this will be my first point so we actually can take students they study with us but then we see that the uh, repressive apparatuses of the state is deciding regarding the papers. And this is something that is going on through the whole European Union and it's uh, horrifying and it's a pure violence. And uh, uh, so our paternalism, I think uh, it's uh, just uh, rhetorical because we, uh, uh, we don't give what it's uh, necessary to be given. And that means a security and also a possibility of life and not just uh, um, some kind of a shelter because uh, this is what they want. And second point, I think uh, regarding the diversity uh, that uh, it will be, uh, I talk about the regime of whiteness and uh, this means that it's a system in the education throughout uh, Europe that is uh, completely white and it's not uh, taking into account not uh, the refugees but not taking into account uh, uh, the myriad of uh, fantastically educated academics uh, that are coming uh, from different backgrounds but are actually born and uh, formed citizens of europe and they are not uh, employed and given uh, uh, possibilities and i think this is one of the biggest problem of our incapacity uh, as uh, uh, epistemological space uh, uh, to even deliver uh, something new and also to take uh, and to open the possibility of the institutions. This, I think, it's uh, the second very uh, dangerous point of uh, the institutions uh, in uh, the European context. And it's uh, rarely changed. So it's not just that white men and then white women are together, uh, women less, uh, uh, but mostly white men. But the worst thing is that all these educated citizens in this uh, really versified European space are not uh, given the chance because of uh, racism, because of structural inequality, because of discrimination, that is completely out of the, any kind of historical way. It is just uh, uh, what we can see all around. Uh, they are not given the possibility actually to uh, teach and to distribute uh, uh, their knowledges and actually to give a uh, path to a future of the uh, European space. And this, I think uh, it's one or the second or parallel a big uh, problem. So, maybe to finish, if I could uh, uh, repeat something, what I said, I will even more politicize uh, all the talks about the institutions of universities uh, and uh, also uh, connect this directly with the capitalist system and also directly with uh, what we see recently with this pathological and psychotic uh, people, men, white men, who are in general in Europe uh, taking uh, and deciding of uh, any kind of politics that is not a politics but is a criminal act. So this is what I will reinforce. I was actually uh, too soft.
and uh, this is because we were not all together so i could not react but i had to speak to the screen thank you thank you marina you saw all these white male figures now on the screen and uh, <laughs> it reminded you the situation so maybe i would ask hafiz and oti uh, who are uh, actually representing this grassroots school activity that they really created uh, on a on their own if they could uh, say a little bit i would be curious to to listen a little bit what is your relation to the official education in indonesia in jakarta what you what, what forced you to to start an art school actually could you tell us uh, microphone microphone hafiz mic microphone <laughs> yes thank you Afib. my name is hafiz uh, so actually we we start this uh, alternative education about art and media actually uh, response after the reformation uh, of indonesia in 1998 so uh, it's like uh, 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 how to react uh, the situation during the times it's not only about uh, the the uh, teaching the the art and media to to the to the student but uh, uh, it's also about the uh, to capture and gathering uh, being together uh, to think uh, what we what we can do for this after the reformation after the the the, the military step down so uh, when we started uh, this uh, from uh, discussion group actually it's a uh, it's really small group and then uh, we uh, it's really organic way of discussion but uh, and then the, uh, yeah after the 17th years yeah of course it become uh, quite many hundreds uh, participants students uh, participants in 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 forum lending so we of course we have sometimes we have relations with the uh, with the uh, with the art school uh, i sometimes uh, give a lecture in our art school also uh, but not uh, full time but and uh, and uh, yeah, give it a highlight about the what happened in grassroots, what happened in the in the in the in the in in informal uh, uh, strategy in 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 teaching uh, about art and media. So I think that's that's it, uh, it about uh, forum lending. Yeah, for me, what was fascinating while I, I was visiting uh, you and your students were, were the methods because it reminded me so much like Bauhaus, you know, for me, I told you, it's like <laughs> Indonesian Bauhaus that is built it up from the scratch, but suddenly using the methods of uh, Bauhaus education, much more than the, the methods of uh, classical art education that are, uh, that are kind of conserved at the Academy of Fine Arts in, in, in Jakarta. Yes, uh, it's, it's like the Bauhaus method. It's 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 like uh, how to put the uh, the idea about the 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 form actually to give a, a form itself. But in another way, we, we put together in in, in organic uh, approach. So and also we 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 build some platform uh, that uh, that all the students can apply. Uh, the the strategy to connect between the the formal the structural uh, method and and, uh, and the organic method so so I think it's it's combinations like uh, the the like you said the Bauhaus strategy it's 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 like uh, one one uh, one of method actually it's, it's more like give uh, approaching what is what is a formal what is an aesthetic way of thinking and uh, and but also of course we have a roots also in, uh, in the context of the way of to see the aesthetic uh, form in in context of indonesia 
So it's combinations. Uh, but uh, for, for us, uh, the formal, like, uh, like you say that the Bauhaus uh, uh, form, it's, it's, it's more like uh, to put the, the, the basic uh, strategy to, to, uh, to, uh, to start uh, uh, to get, digging deep about the experimentations of uh, visual uh, language what uh, that 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 student want to to approach so it's not only about the school like the school uh, 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 of, uh, of 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 uh, form uh, but but more about the 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 method of us how to build the construct uh, uh, and also being uh, uh, part of uh, visual phenomena in 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 the, in the basic way. So. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else wants to react on this question. Okay, <laughs> maybe it's me. <laughs> so. Um, Hello everyone. It's um, it's a pity that we cannot be together in flesh in Prague. So your question was <laughs> an, an, an excellent question. Um, what is um, I, I didn't say. So my my answer is is rather simple. Um, uh, I sent. Um, um, a short document to you, and you can distribute it to any anyone who is interested, with some texts and links um, concerning my um, uh, my video talk, because it was a little bit difficult to to keep this uh, 15 minutes um, uh, limitation, and um, I, I thought that maybe um, uh, you could be interested in and in, uh, in, in some further aspects. Um, the other thing I, uh, I would like to say that um, maybe um, I'm a little bit, uh, my position is a little bit different than yours because uh, I, I wouldn't say that I represent the Academy of Fine Arts of Budapest or the University of Fine Arts of Budapest. Uh, I can say I, I can represent only the um, intermedia faculty um, 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 of, of this university. The, the university itself is a, um, a classical art academy with all of those classical faculties. And uh, um, I don't really remember how deep I uh, explained it in, in this uh, video contribution, the story of our department, but uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a kind of a parallel with the Prague Academy um, with, the, <laughs> with one difference that uh, Milan Kinjak was very radical. And uh, in our case, the students were very radical. Um, because in, uh, in 1890, nothing has happened in the art academy. So the whole country was boiling and, and, and the political changes were um, in progress since the mid 80s. You can imagine, maybe you remember, but uh, nothing has happened in the art school. And uh, the most surprising thing that an, an ultra um, conservative very um, um, a real party sculpt, uh, a sculptor uh, was the, the dean, the rector of the, of the school. And the students made a revolt. It's a, it's a very well-known story. And uh, they simply they wanted to have uh, new, um, new teachers, new professors, because the, uh, the generation of the, the, the artists who were active in the 60s, 70s, um, early 80s, uh, they weren't simply allowed, I mean, physically weren't allowed to enter the art academy. I know it very well because I studied there 
I was kicked out um, um, after four years. <clears throat> no problem, I have my degree. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it was a very interesting situation because uh, um, most of the invited artists were established elder artists uh, with a, a certain reference past and uh, and uh, um, two people were somehow um, let's say at the end of the list um, um, Miklos Peternak an art historian who, who dealt with uh, media art photography film experimental film and uh, and myself uh, we worked together very closely. We were uh, friends uh, since the early 80s, and we did uh, lots of things together. Um, today, I would say that we made a, a series of lecture performances in the mid 80s, and somehow we were invited, like um, people who who can do something with media, media art. Etc. And uh, the story follows that uh, we decided not to join to any existing department of the of the school, and we established uh, a, a new department. And it was a very, um, very uh, I mean, um, a kind of radical decision because it wasn't sure at all that we could get along with this. I mean, we get through with this project. Um, the famous art historian Laszlo Becker, who was the senior art historian of East European art in general and a very well-known name, he wanted to establish an interdisciplinary uh, faculty and uh, he didn't get a, a permission of, in, in 90. You, you, it's, it's totally absurd. And uh, the most absurd is that 20 years after, the, the University of Fine Arts of Budapest established a, a so-called curatorial studies uh, faculty with the very same program uh, what Laszlo Becker um, wrote in, in, in 90. And Laszlo Becker teaches there as a professor emeritus. So um, it's... Um, Oh, okay, so basically, I I I, I wanted to to say just this, and uh, and I, I hope very much that um, 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 I, I could explain some other things uh, in this uh, uh, video talk, and uh, mm, mm, anyway, so uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much, Janos. So uh, I think uh, we we somehow. Uh, we, we could talk longer, of course, uh, but somehow I think we, we reached this, this limit of, of 30 minutes and I think uh, what is substantial are your contributions that now we will, we will broadcast one after the other and also they will become an archive in the future so, so people can also visit them and, uh, and watch them uh, online uh, in the archive, but uh, still I think it's, uh, it's of course uh, nicer to watch them now. So uh, I would like to thank you very much to, to contribute first uh, and uh, to take part in this improvised uh, talk uh, online. And uh, we will start to, to screen your contributions. You can uh, stay connected, you can disconnect as you want. Just I would like to kindly ask you to, to, close, uh, to unmute yourself. I will do the same and also to stop the video. I think it's somehow uh, technically, I was told that uh, that it's it's a better solution if we, if we all stop video and unmute ourselves. But still, you can you can watch, of course. And uh, first, I would like to I will always uh, introduce uh, orally or by talking the the contributors, and then my colleague will uh, play uh, play the the videos. So the the first uh, contribution is uh, was conceived by. Two uh, participants, Professor Clemens von Wedermeyer and Professor Dr. Benjamin Meir Kramer. Uh, Clemens Wedermeyer was born in 1974 in Germany and studied photography and media in Bielefeld. Bielefeld, sorry, I'm sorry, Bielefeld, and 
fine arts uh, at the uh, Academy of Visual Arts in Leipzig, where he now holds a professorship for media art, expanded cinema. As a filmmaker and artist, he lives in Berlin. His films and complex video installation embrace several storylines and points of view. His works explore the personal and collective history of the 20th century, as well as the power and control structures of the present. Here, uh, I would mention a few uh, solo exhibitions of Clement von Wedermeyer uh, from the uh, Gallery for uh, Contemporary Art uh, in Leipzig in 2019, 2016, Neue Berlinische Kunstverein, 2015, Kunsthalle Hamburg, and the selection of group exhibitions, uh, Chicago Architecture Biennial 2019, Riga Biennial 2019, <coughs> 66 Berlin International Film Festival 2012, Documenta 13 in 2007 and Multiplex Direction in Art, uh, MoMA, New York, uh, 2007. His colleague that conceived uh, uh, the video together uh, with, with uh, Clemens, Benjamin Meyer Kramer, is Vice Dean and Professor of Cultures of the Curatorial at the same Academy of Fine Arts in Leipzig. After studying comparative literature and history in Tübingen, New York, and Berlin, he co-founded the scenography agency Schweitz in 2001 and was awarded by PhD in 2007. Before joining uh, the school uh, in Leipzig in 2011, he received a postdoc grant from Freie Universität in Berlin and collaborated with uh, the artist Willem de Roy. Together with Clemens von Wedermeyer, he curated the exhibitions Fremd in 2016 at the Ethnological Museum in Leipzig. His main research areas are epistemology and methodology of artistic and curatorial practice, issues of presentation and representation, as well as the history of institutional critique. He is co-editor of four-volume anthology, Cultures of the Curatorial, that is published by Stenberg Press in Berlin. And he published a monography on uh, as well as three volume publication in Tolerance together with Willem de Roy. So uh, I would like to ask my colleague that will now show the first contribution. First of all, hello to everyone. I'm Clemens von Wiedemeyer, and I invited Benjamin Meyer Kramer, my colleague at the school in Leipzig, um, to speak together, as we both have uh, slightly different perspectives that overlap. Hello to everyone, and thank you for listening to this program. I'm trying to picture some sort of audience, which is a weird situation, sitting at home at my desk. But I do hope that at one point in the not so far future, we will be able to actually have a conversation about the topics raised by the initiators of this conference, for which I'm very grateful. Thank you, Clemens, for the invitation to have this slightly virtual dialogue under the conditions of a semi-lockdown over here in Berlin. First thing I would have to stress is that um, when we ask what teaching and learning at an art school should be like, I would have to be a student. I have studied at two art schools. And now I'm a professor at the same school where I've studied. Nearly 20 years ago, I was looking for a way out of the institution as a student, taking advantage of the opportunities it offered me studying within. My degree at the university was also a liberation from an education that was repeatedly, perhaps even constantly, criticized. What I suppressed or was not interested in back then as a student was how this institution functioned. But what it does not or could not offer strikes me back today as a teacher. What drove me back then was to leave the institution in order to move forward as a young artist or filmmaker. Now that I'm a teacher here, I'm trying for the first time to walk in, understand and change it, perhaps. 
But then as now the only way to get in or out of this institution is I think to have a leg to stand on somewhere else as well. What I would like to stress also after this beginning is that we have to see the institution from the student's perspective. How talented or capable the individual person is is a completely different question. The central question is how the work of these individual students is supported, cared for and helped by a group that includes fellow students and teachers, professors, and also the interested public. Benjamin, I invited you to talk also because you have a multiple perspective. As you suggested, I'll start by sketching my perspective on the Art Academy. I studied in the field of humanities at several universities and did my PhD in comparative literature. After that, I moved on to working in the gallery and co-founded an agency for exhibition design, did some curating, worked together with the artist Willem de Roy for several years and finally ended up at the Academy of Fine Arts Leipzig about nine years ago. I started at the Academy as a research assistant and lecturer in the MA program Cultures of the Curatorial, which I have been running with Beatrice von Bismarck for the past years. I was appointed as professor three years ago at the Academy, where I also teach theory seminars for the students of all the art departments. Due to the privilege of not having introduced a BA MA system, our art students graduate with a diploma instead of doing an MA. This provides much more freedom in terms of curriculum, teaching formats and evaluation. Since on top of that we are also getting rid of grading altogether, the Academy sometimes feels like a space in which some of the current dynamics related to evaluation, credits and numbers are less influential than in the outside world. It remains to be seen and critically discussed what the actual effects of this situation will be. Besides teaching in the only MA program at the Academy, which is the Coratorial Studies program, and in the Theory Department, I also serve as one of the two Vice Deans of the Academy. So my perspective is shaped by those different jobs I do at the Academy and the different functions I perform, which actually requires switching between different points of view. In case this sounds like a smooth shifting back and forth, I would like to stress that this is not the case, as those different perspectives do not correspond and sometimes even contradict each other. What has been maybe the most crucial experience of those past years is the growing sense of the complexity of what we casually call a public institution and my involvement in such structures. The Academy is financed by tax money. The budget for the entire educational sector is negotiated and decided by the Parliament of the state of Saxony where Leipzig is located. The Ministry of Culture together with the Ministry of Finance allocates our annual budget which is then divided into several sub-budgets, some of them depending on our performance as an academy. Which means as an institution we are embedded in politics and that we are dependent on the Parliament and its members. On the one hand we have the privilege of a more or less secured budget and a number of paid jobs. But we get a concrete sense of this dependency whenever the ministries, for instance, develop new tools of evaluation which are connected with recalculating budgets and the quantity of paid jobs in our academy. The consequences of election results have become more of an issue during the past five years. We are, for instance, confronted with inquiries by the right-wing populist party which targets our class for artists who came to Germany as refugees. This is of course only the tip of the iceberg. Being a public institution has many far-reaching consequences and I would be very interested in discussing this further at a later point. But before diving too deep into this topic, we shift perspective and Clemens will talk about his approach to teaching. 
after a two year interdisciplinary basic study period in media art, students come into the class for about three years. Some also transfer to the class from outside. Each student brings along a different, often quite special skill. The point is to bring these individual abilities into the group, to specialize them individually, to have them discover new skills. So they have to develop their own methodology, but also even their own grammar, their own semiotics, their own world. Because their own work will be something new, something that has perhaps never existed before. So the unknown, the new, is the goal. From the individual we come to the group, because the fellow students are one of the most important factors for teaching at eye level in an art school, I think. The group, here it is called class, produces a network, a critical capacity, confronts the students with a different practice. They learn from it and at the same time they set themselves apart. Sometimes they form gangs, develop each other further. I am therefore a friend of the art class, which for about two years or three years produce, produces both security and openness. Of course, group dynamics play a big role, which can be influenced by pedagogical concepts and projects. In the class, there are individual presentations and group discussions. Guests are invited, you meet other classes, go on excursions, you talk about theory seminars you are attending, plan projects or exhibitions together, disappear abroad and come back to get your diploma. There are crises, you change classes, try your luck elsewhere and do as many projects as possible, which eventually lead you out of the close relationship between your fellow students and the professor. Art education strives from the individual to the group to finally leave the institution. The goal is to leave the institution and not only seek the unknown, but to dare to produce it yourself. Therefore, the Art Academy must educate to become a memory itself. My class is called uh, Expanded Cinema and this subject also has been a direction in American art teaching in California. It was about leaving cinema, applying it to society. Buckminster Fuller is probably the one who is most quoted in the book Expanded Cinema by Jean Youngblood. From Fuller we know the idea that the world must be imagined from the outside as a spaceship. Some of the concepts of expanded cinema, which can also be seen as reform concepts for academies of the 60s, 70s, can still be referred to today. Much of expanded cinema also had to do with digitalization, with the question of a network, a total network. Jean Youngblood wrote, when we say expanded cinema, we actually mean expanded consciousness. The lines of content in my field of teaching will move more and more in the direction of artistic research with an updated look at digital innovations in film and narratives where we are mounting stories in digital spaces with data. I do hope that we will manage to provide the framework at our academy and create spaces for this development Clemens just outlined. What I personally really enjoy about working at an art academy is its proximity to the contemporary surrounding world. It sounds a bit like a cliche, but I actually experience this proximity as being much more present than, for instance, at the Philosophy Institute of the University where I worked as a postdoc before joining the academy. It might be important to mention, though, that the Leipzig Art Academy has a strong focus on so-called theory and therefore a rather large theory department. Luckily, this is also appreciated by the majority of our students and our seminars are very popular with an average of about 30 to 50 participants. One of my favorite events at HGB was a series of panel discussions we did on the issue of the relevance of art 
and the art of relevance. This serial event developed around discussions we had in several seminars I did at the time. One was on notions of critique, another one on representation, and a third one on post-colonial theory. The team which conceived of the event consisted of five students and myself, which was not only fun, but also meant that the student's perspective, which Clemens mentioned earlier on, was the driving force behind this discourse. Each of the three panels, panel discussions drew an audience of about 200 people, which was way beyond our expectations. For each night, we invited three guests working in the art field, as artists, theoreticians, gallerists, or editors. As a starting point, we took Adorno's observation that art is not a necessity, which we related to our observation that there seems to be an implicit agreement that only such art is considered relevant, which directly addresses political and social issues. Tom Hollert very appropriately called this the new relevanz dogma, relevanz diktat in German. By questioning the relevance of art, we of course also questioned that of the Art Academy. The aim of such events was not to find conclusive answers to this question, but to create a temporary space for this discourse involving different diverse perspectives. We recorded and transcribed all the discussions and put those materials online where they are still frequently accessed and referred to. This embeddedness in current politics and the proximity to the contemporary world are two aspects which play a central role for my teaching and my understanding of its relevance. Last year I did a discussion-based seminar which I called Academy of Crisis, for which we took utopian models of the Art Academy as a point of departure. We related these historical concepts to our experience of the Academy and developed ideas for communication formats and methods which we felt are missing in our institution. And there's obviously a lot that there is missing in this field. Looking at Art Academy teaching from this point might also show its huge potential of questioning the relation of so-called theory and so-called practice. It's a rather simple observation, but in comparison to how academic teaching at universities is commonly understood in Germany, the spheres of practice and theory are considered far less separated in art academies, but rather as interrelated, interdependent and therefore connected fields. Also in our curatorial research program, we aim at developing a notion of research which comprises written discourse as well as spatial and aesthetic forms of expression and reflection. Performing another shift of perspective, Clemens will now return to our ancient institution. This institution is 256 years old and has undergone several major changes. This institution carries its traditions, its own museum as a snail shell. In our case, these are four departments, painting, graphic art, painting and graphic art, and book art, graphic design. Photography was actually added around 1900 and media art in 1995. In Leipzig, of course, the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 at the German unification in 1990 was an important turning point, which was accompanied by the students at that time and led to massive changes at the academy a short time later, when many new colleagues from the West joined and many new experiments were made with media art, for example. So much has changed in 30 years. The changes today are sometimes met with skepticism or resignation. In 2009, the cultures of the curatorial studies program was introduced, where Benjamin teaches. Benjamin also said that instead of the bachelor master system, we still offer a diploma. About 500 students are enrolled with us. Every change here takes years, decades, and you first have to find out where you can make a lasting change. 
because of the rigid framework, I think students and teachers are heavily dependent on people. People develop their own teaching. They do not fill out a subject area, but develop the area itself and establish it. On the one hand, this encourages responsibility. On the other hand, this personalized teaching can produce psychological patterns. It reinforces them, gatekeeping, power games. Within the institution, it is therefore necessary to look at the human qualities in addition to the professional qualifications. When I say that the aim is to leave the institution and the institution wants to penetrate the student's memory, this is not intended as a negative image of the institution. Rather, it is precisely our school in a region that is also very conservative, for instance, with more openness and understanding for minorities, that can paint an image for the students that could be the avant-garde of their memory. For example, we have done a project with students called Cinema on the Move, which has organized site-specific film screenings in the region, in villages and small towns in Saxony, in order to discuss with each other. A reality check and artistic work that radiates from the university. For out there is sometimes an enmity against art, and the heavy doors at the entrance of this institution and the thick walls are images in flux. Hard for the newcomers to get in, hard for some to get out. But for the art haters, it is also a sign that we do not simply surrender. Thank you very much, Clement von Bedermeyer and Benjamin Meyer Kramer, to, for your contribution. <coughs> we will follow with the next video that uh, was made by Professor Dr. Marina Grzhnic, who is a philosopher, theoretician, and artist from Ljubljana, Slovenia. She serves as a professor and a research advisor. She, since 2003, she is a professor at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, in Austria. She publishes extensively lectures worldwide and is involved in video productions since 1982. Here follows a selection of her books uh, that she wrote or conceived uh, together with Rosa Ritzenamer, which is a book, New Feminism, Worlds of Feminism, Queer and Networking Conditions, Vienna, 2008. Marina Grzhnic and uh, Shefik Tatlic, Necropolitics, Racialization and Global Capitalism. Historization of Biopolitics and Forensic of Politics, Art and Life. Lexington Books, 2014. And the last book that I will mention is uh, Border Thinking. Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, Stenberg Press from 2018. So please, could you Who am I? I was appointed professor at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna in 2003, teaching for the Studio for Conceptual Art. But also I am a case of transdisciplinary professor, that means I'm a doctor of philosophy, so I also monitor quite some of the future doctorants or doctors in philosophy. The Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna is a polystructured institution that connects uh, many fields, not only art, but also forming the professors who will teach art in other schools, offering doctorate in philosophy and philosophy of art, and also 
doctorates in uh, art, architecture, scenography. So it's actually very important institution because of this polyvalent structure. When I started to teach in 2003, I decided to change conceptually the name, only conceptually in Studio for Post-Conceptual Art Practices, because conceptual art was something of the history and I wanted actually to face the 2000 and what will come on. When I started to teach and I took this position, for me this was a political decision. I think it's challenging actually to enter such an institution, but also it means that we cannot come out as innocent body and claim any innocence in the process of production of knowledge and being part of the institution of art. Now, when is the time that I'm talking for the camera? This is the 17th of November 2020, and this time is specific because it's under the sign of COVID-19. And the COVID-19, the coronavirus, affected terminally the educational system. Universities, in 2020 are closed for the second time, but also other schools are closed, mostly in many parts of the European Union. All is going on virtually and digitally. This has an effect on the whole system of knowledge and on the institution of art, but also on the society. Many are stuck in the limbo. Why I'm saying this? Because we have to ask ourselves, who are those who are without a computer and the internet and have no a space to work? Many, too many. Do they have food to eat properly? This is not a stupid moral question, because actually all these questions are connected with the institution of art being central to the system of reproduction. Knowledge is material and not spiritual. Your intestines works in order for us to think. So who are those who have nothing to eat? The number is even bigger. Practically 50% of the students in the academy is precarious workers. But this number goes until 90%. Though the most aggravated positions are those of the so-called third state countries. These are students that are not part of the European Union. Their lives is heavy. They have to have money on a bank account for getting a visa. They are part of the administration of the state and this administration, it's like a rope around their neck. It's a grip, a clinch. So it seems we talk so many, so much about the autonomous position of the institution of art, the academies and so on. But more and more is becoming clear that the neoliberal global capitalist states in the European Union the police and state administration are those who decide who can study because they give the visas, they give the permits and so on. So the first question that is being key for the reformation of the academies, art, university, is the questions, question of autonomy. Paradoxically, it's coming before what is called knowledge production. And this autonomy is so important that in the Occident we see big changes in the last period. So on November 13, 2020, directors of several institutions of art in Austria, also from the Academy of Fine Arts Vienna, wrote a letter to the Federal Ministry of Education, Science and Research because rumors are all around that the new amendments 
of the university law in Austria will take under huge control the Senate. The Senate of universities and academies is the most important parliamentary body. The power will be given instead to the Senate, to rectorate, but even more to some university councils. The university councils are actually political bodies. Representatives of the political parties on power are inside, and this means the autonomy of the institution of art, something that was the sign of the open society in the West, is under big suppression. But these are only some of the changes in this letter. Others are connected with the speed up study that is now or will be imposed on the students. Finishing, to finish as soon as possible, to start to work, but where? And also to pay tax. So all this is going on in the time of the corona situation. And this prevents a big exchange of opinions, a public discussion and so on. So we see how the corona is actually working with restructuring of the place of the institution of art and academies. What is with this virus? Daniela Meyer, an anthropologist that worked intensively with us in the past, wrote me a mail and stated, a virus, it's a very neoliberal one, free circulation of goods and money, but a total restriction of human movement. The transfer of tax money towards enterprises and companies, isolation of people at home and so on. This was in March 2020. And then the Academy decided to open a special project program to get some points for those who will be active, helping in the time of coronavirus, engaging on social platforms, helping the community, helping the neighbor. A very good move. Another student, Henry Denise, wrote a small report. She stated, 2020, the summer semester, was the stolen year. The whole world has come to a standstill and the reason is the pandemic COVID-19. All of a sudden, it seems like humanity, touching, hugging, talking, kindness, parting, all the good stuff affiliated with socializing has come to an end. And every form of discrimination became the order of the day. She said, I have to take care of the community of the Afro Rainbow Austria that she is chairing. And also, for her it's important to draw and help the community. Consequences of the pandemic on our very vulnerable community are, she stays, job loss, depression, homelessness, and the standstill of asylum procedures, to name some. Therefore, we see that all what was said until now is actually interventions on the institution of art and also have big consequences for what is called production, distribution, and institutionalization of knowledge. It seems that it is a task today by neoliberal global capitalism to change and transform universities and academies into managerial institutions that will produce skilled students. The final, the final point of this is to practically make a pressure on the public institution to change the public institution and also to make them kind of an apolitical institutions for just technological skill and agency. 
Also the demand is to just finish as soon as possible the study and in a certain way to suppress the autonomy. Already more than 10 years ago, a scholar, Kirsten Forkert, when it was very actual to talk about the Bologna program, wrote the following. She made remarks on the contradictions of post-studio practices concerning the Academy in the present political clima climate. We of course invited Kirsten Forgard to come to Vienna from Canada because we named ourselves post-conceptual art practices and she was writing about post-studio practices. She said, the changes that are taking part have to do a lot with art commodity value, as well as with the role of the artist concerning another figure, the white collar. This is a kind of a professional. And the artist, this is the idea, should be something very similar. But they are both symptom and response to certain political and economic shifts. What this means? At that point, we didn't know, but it came very clear. Financialization, administrative taking off the autonomy, skills and productivity. So, what we do? What is our plan? The post-conceptual art practices department actually is a studio, works with a contextualization of art. And this contextualization cannot go differently than with theory and reflection. How actually theory and critical practice contaminate our practices with the social and vice versa. And again, I have to quote Kirsten Forkert because she was the one who were envisioning the changes that we are facing today. I quote, post-studio practices challenge the assumption that art is about technical virtuosity or mute creative expression, and that what happens in the studio or classroom is separate from the rest of our lives. Certain aspects of post-studio practice also question the artist's definition as romantic, heroic individual also imagined as white and male, one who does not consider the political or economic context of his work. On the other hand, how much do post-studio practices, as they are taught within the academy, really challenge conventional definitions of authorship or signature style? So, what could be some points for the future that we apply and work on in the present. Activism, politics and theory are the most important for practices and politics of representation. Theory is not an old academic theory that suffocates the art practice, but a contemporary theoretical and critical thinking that helps students to develop processes for conceptualization of fine arts and the politics of the world in many different layers. Also, the idea is to keep the bridge between media and technology, but not only film, photo, video, but also social platforms in order to develop politically and socially engaged art that can intervene in a wider context. Art is not a tool that can be simply applied for a certain innocent process of production and distribution of images and knowledge. Education is not a transparent machine for production and circulation of skills. So we are aware of this. We also published some books as a process of communal work that is one of the most important point the first book we published in 2005-06, it was on anti-Semitism. The second was on feminism. The third 
that came out in 2013 has a subtitle, The Vocabulary of Decoloniality, and it puts at its central point social and political antagonism, what this means, how we form our epistemologies to take into account past colonialism and present forms of coloniality and to focus on anti-racism and new political figure, the migrant. Nobody talks about the migrants in these days. But also to, in a certain way, reflect on the invigorated anti-Semitism and see how all these processes of racialization and rationalization affect knowledge. So, to summarize, one, what is necessary to be done, definitely, is to rethink Western democracy and imperialism, colonialism, in relation to the knowledge that we produce. The outcome of this is a program of anti-racist policy, questioning the regime of supremacist whiteness or the regime of whiteness as such, as regime of power that has only one line of time, but time is not white, time is colorful. Then is of course the consequent criticism of rising anti-Semitism and other forms of racism, but also thinking about fascism and the role of art in all this. Art lost its central potential as it was in the 70s. Today, science, biotechnology, computers are those who redirects, or as Louis Artisser would say, over-determine what matters in the society. Still, art has a power, cannot be just an anthropological machine, something only about affect, but can use its potential for critical discourses, reformulating memories and histories, open a space for activist engagement, and formats of art that we cannot name now as art, but soon, maybe this will be the space where we can, we will have a chance to do this. That means also developing artistic practices with trans-feminist and migrant queer positions. So again, not one line of knowledge, but actually a pluriversal horizon of knowledge that will also embrace other formats of practices and also other formats of knowledges. Final, final projects as research that will work on community-based works and also on intensive exchange with other communities outside of the institution of art. Thank you, Marina Grzhnić. And uh, the next contribution comes from Anna Kola, who is a curator, educator, and researcher who lives in the southeast coast of England, where she co-founded uh, and directs independent art school called Open School East in Margate since 2013. So it's an example of, of one of these grassroots uh, new art schools that were initiated and uh, are growing up actually. And Anna will tell you very precisely how, how it functions, how, how she proceeds. Uh, 
In parallel, Anna is a PhD candidate at, uh, in the School of Geography at the University of Nottingham, where she is working under the title What Makes an Alternative Space? Question mark. A conceptual, organizational, and physical exploration of alternative learning, social, and art centers in the UK, 1884 till 2022. Anna was associate curator at Lafayette Anticipation in Paris from 2014 till 2020. She was associate director of Beton Salon Center for Art and Research in Paris from 2011-2012. She was curator at Gasworks London 2007 till 2010 and programmer for Resonance uh, uh, at British, uh, at London based uh, radio broadcasting. Anna was co-curator with Lydia Ye and of British Art Show 8 in Leeds, Edinburgh, Norwich and Southampton in 2015 and 2016. So please, Anna, actually she apologized. She couldn't join us uh, today in the discussion, unfortunately. So please, uh, can we show her contribution? Hello, my name is Anna Colin. I am the co-founder of Open School East in Margate in the UK and the current director. So first I'd like to thank um, Tomasz Vanek and Vita Vanek for their invitation to take part um, in this collective reflection on the future and the present of art education. Um, in 2013, we co-founded Open School East in London and in 2017, we moved the organization to Margate. Uh, which is a seaside town in the southeast of England. We define Open School East as a free, independent art school and as a community space that focuses on collective learning through the arts. Free is important in the UK, where a single year in higher education costs uh, an English or European student £9,000 a year, which equates to about €10,000 a year. And for an overseas student, it costs about €30,000 a year. And the term independent, which we also use to define the school, relates to the fact that we are not affiliated to any particular university, academy or institute, although we have collaborated with many of them in the past. Um, Open School East runs a variety of programs. The first one we created in 2013 is what we call the Associates Program. It's a year long, uh, it's a development program, which is studio and tuition based. It is non-accredited and it welcomes a group of about 13 artists every year from various disciplines. Some of them have undergone formal training and others haven't got prior qualifications. Some of them have been to art school before and some of them have come from, say, communication design, textile, theatre, set design, dance, anthropology, etc. The way it works is that the associates apply and they are selected according to a range of criteria, which includes um, quality of ideas and forms, a recognized need to access free and informal education, an interest in being part of a group of people with different practices and experiences, a willingness to work um, in collaboration as well as individually, to be self-directed and to interact with members of the public at different moments. So we'll go back to this program um, more shortly in detail because it's the one that uh, is most relevant to this symposium. But I really want to introduce the rest of the organization as no program functions fully independently from the other. And Open School is not just a typical small scale art school. It's an organism, uh, one that is inhabited and participated by a wide range of learners and users from various generations and walks of lives. And they come to the school, whether to learn, to skill share, to develop their practice, to gain qualifications, build their confidence, socialize, or even debate with others. So as I said, the associates program is our first program. The second main program is what we call the young associates program. And it was started in 2019. It was in the making for about two, three years. And it's an art and design program complete with functional skills in English and math which replaces the last two years of school for young people aged 16 to 18. These are people who have been failed by mainstream education, who did not fit in for all sorts of reasons and have slipped through the net. Unlike the first program, this one is accredited and it allows the young people to re-engage with their education 
and to go to university after equipped with qualifications, if they desire to do so, of course. Um, this program, like the first one, is led by a group of international artists, as well as architects, textile, graphic and fashion designers who work in conjunction, in this case, with qualified teachers. The third program we run is um, a weekly art school for children aged 5 to 11 who lack opportunities to engage in culture and art making due to limited or absent provision in their school, um, but also due to socioeconomic disadvantage, i.e. not having access to after-school clubs or uh, paid opportunities uh, to learn how uh, to make art. Um, and yeah, any other factors that would exclude them from civic life, essentially. And at this stage, I think it's important to say that the town we work in, Margate, is marked by significant social and economic deprivation with high levels of poverty and unemployment and low educational attainment. So part of our programs, especially with children and young people, have been developed in direct response to the local situation and to the needs surrounding education and social inclusion. Our final program, which we simply call the public program, opens the school out to members of the public from the local area, as well as from further field. It includes um, skills-based workshops led by artists who are often invited at the initiative of those who undertake the associates program. It also includes cultural theory seminars um, uh, that we host in collaboration with research groups and academic institutes. At the moment, we are collaborating with the Centre for Critical Thought at the University of Kent in Canterbury, which is half an hour from Margate. We also organise as part of our public programme, um, medium and long term participatory art projects, which are led uh, variously by international artists as well as the artists from the region. And these projects place the development of creative skills at the centre and it engages or they engage participation from groups that are often excluded from cultural life including senior citizens or people with learning disabilities. These projects, like many of our programs, make use of art as a pedagogical tool, a vehicle for cross-community encounters, for skills development, for confidence building. So this is a broad introduction to what Open Schoolist is. And in a nutshell, it's an alternative art school and a locally responsive cultural and learning facility which is run informally and according to principles of collaboration, co-production, responsiveness and openness. Now I want to respond to some of the questions that were posed in the original invitation. Open School is, unlike many but not all of the institutions and schools which have been invited as part of this symposium, is a very young uh, and independent institution which sits partly outside of the education sector and for that reason, it has been able to model its pedagogical methods as it intended, rather than in compliance with the set of more rigid criteria. Open Schoolies was primarily set up in response to the crisis faced by art education in England. So we have seen that fees are really high. Um, so is the student debt, which makes um, art education and its promises of a rather precarious future increasingly inaccessible to those who are less advantaged from a socioeconomic perspective. The other factor that we observed is that um, the, critical residence, resist, sorry, the critical resistance space that universities and art school had once been has been rather briskly repressed by the marketization of education. Finally, London's art schools, and I just want to remind you that we were started in London originally, London art schools have become increasingly connected to the art market, which has had the dual effect of discouraging social practice and its largely process rather than product oriented approach. And it's also had the effect of generating competition for attention from the private gallery sector between students. So Open School is started with a reformist agenda and embraced from the outset um, alternative education principles, which um, in a nutshell reside in collective, democratic, um, non-competitive learning, 
self-direction, agency and implication of learners in decision-making processes, critical thinking, and last but not least, a situated approach, which places learners in situations that directly connect to their experiences and strive to give these experiences visibility. So this last aspect is something that relates more to the work that we do with the young people. I won't have so much the opportunity to touch on it in the short space we have been given. In the UK, many art schools are still very much run according to disciplinary categorizations. For example, a student in sculpture will often be discouraged to engage with performance and a painting student will be expected to largely stick to this medium. The independent setup of Open School East has allowed for a much more open approach where we make no distinction between disciplines where crucially the artists who undertake the associates program are entirely in charge of programming the second and the third terms of their education and to invite anyone that inspires them. So we give them a budget, we give them guidelines and we give them carte blanche and they might be inviting an artist, a fiction writer, a philosopher, an urbanist, a housing activist, a landscape designer, whatever they see fit really for their learning and for what they might want to um, come across with um, culturally and artistically uh, or beyond. The first term is programmed by the team who invites every year a different artist uh, or in the large sense of the term really uh, to develop a curriculum which leads to the development of a collaborative project between the associates and the guest artists. So for example next year we will be working with Assemble, the architecture collective, um, around the idea of care and maintenance, um, stewardship and sustainability. So um, Assemble's curriculum will question how we can begin to participate in an ongoing caring relationship with the artists with whom we share the space today, but also those that will follow tomorrow. The curriculum will engage testing changes to the material fabric of the building that we have recently moved into to observe how a culture of repair inscribes the social and political culture at the center of a school which is built on relationships rather than objects. So throughout the year, the associates are also guided by a faculty of mentors, um, artists, again, you know, broadly speaking, curators, theorists, whom we invite to work with the school on a yearly basis to accompany the associates in their practice, um, in the work, in the production of work and projects that they realize, um, sometimes individually, sometimes collaboratively, and which will end up being showcased up as part of um, a studio, an open studio, uh, halfway through the year and as part of an end of the year exhibition. So the associates program establishes that there should be a mixture of skills based activities, for instance, workshops and short courses, which are not just aimed at the associates, but also members of the public so that more people can benefit from this education. And in the past, these courses have been geared towards analog film practice, um, ceramics, coding, animation, to name just a few. And on the other hand, we have theory based activities, for example, seminars and reading groups, again, some of which and sometimes all of them are open to the public. So so that there's more participation to this, you know, access and, you know, more participation and access to this education. But also the um, interest is in opening up a dialogue, opening up a school um, and, um, you know, also enabling a confrontation with um, civil society with, you know, other people who come to school for different reasons. So as such, there's no particular instruction that the school emphasizes on. Uh, and that's in response to one of the questions that was asked uh, in the original brief for this symposium. So we could say, even though I will argue it's not that easy, um, that Open School East Associates Program may be one possible model of what art education could look like in future should formal art education undergo widespread reform. And I'm talking really in the UK context because it's very specific. So the Associates Program and Open Schoolist, you know, in comparison with, say, an MA program, 
uh, is arguably more inclusive, more interdisciplinary, more public oriented, which has the effect of placing artists in the real world and outside the confines of the art school. And the associates are named associates rather than students because they, co they are co-producers of their program and also they are decision makers, not just at the level of programming part of their education, but also at organizational level. So for example, we meet weekly with the associates and staff uh, to review teaching and mentoring sessions, um, but we also discuss, or it's really a platform for the associates to discuss, for instance, who the associates led public program is for, how open schoolies could make itself more visible to the outside, how it should respond to subjects like Black Lives Matter and other such organizational topics that would normally not involve the students. And the agenda is set by the associates who, for many but not all, and this without any request or expectation from the staff, see their role at OSC or open schoolies as we call it short, um, as, so they see their role at Open Schoolies as beyond learning and sharing their learning with others, but also they actively seek to reform their program and by proxy the organization. And not so much at the request of the associates, but um, after a few years of observing um, and hearing the associates asking to be made privy to how the organization works at management level, at senior level, at board level, you know, what is the funding and the financial structure? These were questions that we asked a lot in the first year and made really public. And then after the second year, we tried to shield the associates from that set of interrogations. But uh, many of them have asked to be yeah, made private to this conversation. So since 2016, we invite um, one associate to sit at each quarterly board meeting with the trustees and the staff to observe um, and to participate, um, to gain insight into the organization and its financial workings and to give their views on programming and organizational aspects. And the feedback is not only valued, but it also shapes, sometimes is re in really strong ways, the current and future program, uh, as well as other aspects of the organizations. Um, I'm going to conclude with a set of considerations on accreditation. So just to remind you, the associates program, the program for adult artists is non-accredited. Um, so it doesn't have a yeah, diploma, it doesn't have assessment. Um, it's, yeah, not accredited. So in an article on free, as in non-fee paying and democratic education, the curator and theorist Irit Rogov calls for what she calls, yeah, unframed knowledge. And framed knowledge uh, is, in other words, knowledge that is not framed by thematic and disciplinary orders, but is instead presented in relation to the pressures and struggles of contemporaneity. Rogoff asked two key questions. What are the institutional implications of housing knowledge that is free? And what are the economies of free that might prove an alternative to the market and outcome-based and comparison driven economies of institutionally structured knowledge at present? That's quite a heavy question. The free and frame knowledge that um, Irid Rogoff refers to in the UK context is, I would argue, more comfortably housed in an environment that is unaccredited. Because the moment um, you set up an accreditation system, um, you have to meet a number of outcomes and targets. But having a non-accredited program uh, also opens a can of worms um, because if unframed knowledge can be personally and intellectually fulfilling, its professional usefulness is however much less certain, which begs the following question. Who can genuinely afford to unlearn without a diploma at the end of the journey? Those with time in their hands, those who already have a valid qualification, those with non-vocational aspirations, or those with the determination to learn and grow outside of the establishment, which is a choice uh, which not everyone can make. Discussions on whether or not to accredit the associates program took place on a very regular basis for the first three years of Open School East. 
um, accrediting the program would have meant drastically changing both its format and its approach. And it would have also excluded those who come to open schoolies without prior qualifications. Ultimately, the associate's program is a complement to formal education. Some people even call it a residency or development opportunity. But we could say it's not, or I would say it's not an alternative to an MA program. The group and its activities are to a large extent self-organized and much of what takes place in the program is also shared with other beneficiaries, thereby constantly stretching the classroom walls, um, just to name a few of the key points of convergence between the functionings um, of open schoolies and of a formal art school. I'd like to finish with a final word on the pandemic because we can't avoid talking about it, uh, given that the symposium has been brought online for that reason, and how the pandemic has affected uh, the delivery of education, but in particular, art education. So like many other art schools, Open Schoolist relocated its programs online during the first wave of the pandemic. And sadly, as of uh, next week, we will be returning online as the second wave, wave is hitting the UK rather hard. So. We have learned a lot along the way, not only in terms of technology, but also on how to deliver theoretical content, um, which is easy enough. That's the easy part. Um, theoretical content mentoring uh, is the easy part, but how to deliver skills oriented workshops and courses in a way that's engaging. And that's not too exhausting. We all um, Resort. I mean, we, we all talk about you know Zoom fatigue and how this is affecting also the mental health of the students and the learners. Um, and on that note, uh, we are also learning to develop adequate responses to the increased emotional needs of all our learners uh, in this really doom moment. So going online has shown a possible way forward, one in which more learners from other parts of the world or with impaired mobility could take part in the program, uh, in a program that's been largely out of reach for reasons of physical accessibility or in light of the fact that, for example, as an independent art school, we cannot provide student visas. So there's much work and reflection to do in order to develop that kind of remote learning and to kind of advance it, bring it you know, forward into the future in a more holistic way and partnerships to put in place as well with the other art schools so that, that we can pull together resources and knowledge and, and continue to enable cross-cultural encounters at an age where traveling has been largely put on hold um, and could continue for a while. So I'm going to end here and um, thank you. So Anna Colin's contribution brought on the table, I think, two very interesting, important questions towards <clears throat> classical academies. The first one was how she phrased it very nicely, who can afford to unlearn without uh, a diploma? And the, the second one would be the question of inclusion and inclusivity and exclusivity of, of academic artistic education. The next contribution, <coughs> comes from Jakarta, Indonesia, from two uh, founders of uh, Forum Lenteng, uh, the first Hafiz Rankayale and Otivi Dasari. Hafiz Rankayale was born in 1971 and graduated from Fine Arts uh, School, Fine Arts University at uh, Jakarta Institute of Arts, EKJ, and he graduated in 1994. He's an artist, curator, of Forum Lenteng and Ruan Grupa. He's editor-in-chief of journalfootage.net. He's also artistic director of OK Video, Jakarta International Video Festival. And since, and since 2013, Hafiz is the artistic director of Archipel, which is a festival of experimental and documentary film and video. Otibi Dasari uh, was born in 73 and graduated uh, from Fine Arts at Jakarta, EKJ, from the same school as Hafiz. 
She studied journalistic at Institute of Social and Political Science in Jakarta. She's an artist, writer, filmmaker, and one of the founders of Forum Lenteng. She is also program director of Akumasa and editor of, in chief of akumasa.org and suji.id. One technical thing, we, we have a lot of also uh, material that, that the contributions and the contributors bring. So we will share the, the materials, links, and the, the, the links to the activities uh, that all of you brought uh, online uh, while the contributions will be put on archive. So please uh, now for a contribution. Nama saya Hafiz. Saya akan bicara di sini bersama Oti Widasari, salah satu uh, pendiri Forum Lenteng. Forum Lenteng kami dirikan tahun 2003 sebagai ruang belajar bersama tentang seni dan media. Uh, niatan kami untuk membuka ruang belajar itu adalah sebagai respon terhadap uh, situasi uh, terutama Jakarta dan Indonesia pada umumnya waktu itu, pasca reformasi. Uh, rezim yang diktator sebelumnya sudah runtuh, jadi tapi kita merespon situasi di mana kita punya masalah dengan dengan keterbatasan pengetahuan tentang media dengan Hafiz yang berlatar belakang uh, dengan peminatan seni dan video dan saya yang berlatar belakang jurnalistik uh, kami membangun Forum Lenteng sebagai uh, sebuah tempat belajar uh, bagi orang-orang yang uh, punya minat terhadap pengetahuan bidang-bidang uh, seperti dokumenter jurnalistik atau seni dan media itu sendiri adalah se cuma sebuah metode untuk bagaimana kita mendekatkan diri pada pengetahuan yang selama ini kita uh, kekurangan. Saya sendiri berfokus pada satu program yang dinamakan Aku Masa. Program Aku Masa itu adalah sebuah program tentang uh, literasi media. Jadi kami uh, dan dengan bersama jaringan-jaringan kami yang lainnya di berbagai kota di Indonesia, uh, kami sama-sama meliterasi diri tentang apa itu media. Uh, program Aku Masa ini sendiri <coughs> punya gerakan yang bertujuan untuk uh, mengcounter uh, situasi konglomerasi media tersebut dengan cara memproduksi informasi pakai perspektif orang biasa. Dalam program Aku Masa itu kami memproduksi informasi dengan menggunakan video, teks, uh, image dan dan sebagainya yang bisa diproduksi oleh uh, siapapun. Kami sama-sama merekam persoalan merekam kelokalan dan merekam semua isu-isu yang ada di lokal yang selama ini tidak tercover oleh uh, media massa mainstream. Dari program tersebut, uh, kami juga mengembangkan uh, pusat data uh, tentang pengarsipan, tentang database yang selama ini memang uh, tidak, uh, tidak ada secara uh, komprehensif di Indonesia. Ada suatu apa ya keinginan untuk memberi ruang, mulai mengkritisi bagaimana kerja-kerja media dan bagaimana seni di dalam uh, arus perubahan yang sangat sangat dinamik pada waktu itu tahun 2003 di setelah reformasi. Uh, forum ini dimulai sebagai kelompok belajar karena para anggotanya mayoritas adalah e, mahasiswa komunikasi pada waktu itu, jadi kami banyak diskusi tentang persoalan sosiopolitik dan e, bagaimana media bekerja di waktu itu. Karena saya e, berlatar belakang seni dan punya minat kepada e, film, diskusinya e, apa, e, menjadi e, terbuka menjadi lintas disiplin yang memasukkan unsur seni dan film sebagai medium diskusi, medium studi kasusnya gitu. Metode belajar yang kami e, lakukan adalah belajar secara guyub istilahnya atau belajar bersama yang konsepnya lebih berbagi. Bagaimana berbagi pengalaman e, dalam aspek teoritik, kemudian e, aspek-aspek sejarah dan teoritik itu e, diimbangi dengan e, metode-metode yang eksperimentatif gitu. Eksperimentatif itu macam-macam, e, e, menggunakan film, menggunakan teknik e, dalam seni rupa misalnya drawing, kemudian juga kepenulisan, berpameran, dan performance, dan sebagainya. 
metode kerja di forum lenteng dia dilakukan dengan cara uh, membuka kelas-kelas yang diadakan secara gratis uh, di mana partisipannya uh, cuma dituntut untuk memberikan waktu dan dan intensitas dirinya untuk uh, belajar bersama uh, hal ini penting uh, untuk misi kita yang di awal bahwa kita harus mendekatkan diri dengan pengetahuan membahas soal akses terhadap pengetahuan uh, maka kelas gratis emang memang harus di lakukan. Kenapa gratis? Karena uh, pendidikan seni dan media itu mahal di, di Indonesia. Buat kami uh, uh, membuka ruang uh, bagi para partisipan untuk belajar secara cuma-cuma dan yang kami minta dari mereka hanya membayar dengan waktu, buat kami jauh lebih fair karena uh, dia diharapkan juga akan melakukan hal yang sama. Karena bagi kami akses terhadap pengetahuan ini penting dan e, nantinya kami berharap mereka menjadi agen-agen yang akan men- juga mengamplifying e, apa metode-metode belajar ini di berbagai tempat gitu. Keuntungan dari belajar bersama secara gratis ini adalah e, bagaimana kawan-kawan atau para partisipan itu menjadi jauh lebih le, memer- merasa memiliki ruang ini jadi forum ini jadi. Uh, kalau kita menyebut uh, uh, sekarang ini sebagai kolektif, uh, ada semacam uh, apa, uh, passion yang sangat tinggi terhadap kolektifnya gitu, Forum Lenteng. Karena uh, bagi mereka uh, ruang ini harus tetap dijaga sebagai ruang belajar yang memberikan uh, pengalaman dan yang tiap tahun pasti berbeda gitu. Ada kelas yang memang uh, secara intens belajar tentang bagaimana craftsmanship dan melihat visual itu dengan uh, jauh lebih uh, apa lebih ketat uh, tapi juga uh, ada kelas yang sifatnya uh, mencoba menguji konsep-konsep gitu. dalam kelas-kelas itu kita uh, biasanya uh, mencoba mencari uh, temuan-temuan tata bahasa yang yang bisa disaling mengerti gitu dan itulah perlu intensitas uh, apa belajar bersama dalam perkembangannya uh, kelas-kelas itu juga uh, ada kelas-kelas yang akhirnya dibuka lagi kelas uh, eksperimental kelas uh, apa kelas uh, uh, performance uh, studi studi tentang sejarah film studi tentang estetika film itu menjadi saling terhubung semuanya dari aspek-aspek pengetahuan dasar yang tadi diajarkan di dalam uh, pelajaran yang intens itu gitu. Belajar di uh, forum ini bukan untuk mendidik uh, apa para partisipannya untuk menjadi seniman. Gitu. Uh, kami melihat melihat bahwa pengetahuan seni, pengetahuan media itu sebagai pengetahuan yang yang melengkapi dari aspek-aspek pengetahuan yang sudah menjadi apa modal dari uh, para partisipannya karena kalau dilihat sekarang para partisipan uh, di forum Lenteng itu uh, dari latar belakang yang berbeda-beda ada yang dari seni, ada yang dari filsafat, ada yang dari komunikasi, ada yang dari politik dan juga bahkan ekonomi uh, buat kami uh, uh, Praktek-praktek yang kami kerjakan bersama-sama uh, dengan medium-medium uh, seni seperti film, uh, seni rupa, uh, apa, uh, video dan sebagainya uh, itu hanya sebagai uh, apa bagian dari pengetahuan gitu. Ketika ditindak lanjutnya uh, para partisipan itu memutuskan menjadi seniman, menjadi kurator, menjadi penulis uh, itu sudah uh, apa? Uh, sesuai dengan minat dia gitu. Organisasi ini didirikan uh, untuk membangun kritisisme di dalam masyarakat terhadap uh, isu apapun yang selama ini um, terpusatkan. Metode belajar yang kami lakukan di dalam kelas-kelas di Forum Lenteng dilakukan dengan cara yang sangat organik. Uh, terutama dari saya sendiri uh, metode yang saya lakukan adalah dengan cara uh, memahami isu sosial yang dimulai dengan memahami isu sosial yang sangat dekat dengan diri kita sendiri uh, pemahaman yang dimasukkan di dalam 
tiap kelas itu bagi saya adalah uh, kesadaran untuk mengetahui uh, segala sesuatu yang berkaitan dengan media, seni, atau film dengan cara yang lebih puitik. Uh, bukan dengan cara yang uh, terstruktur yang seperti selama ini uh, kita ketahui dalam metode belajar di sekolah-sekolah. Uh, pendekatan yang paling saya gunakan dalam sebuah kelas adalah uh, dengan cara individual. Di kelas-kelas yang saya buka untuk para partisipan di forum lenteng itu e, biasanya saya metode belajarnya sangat struktural gitu, terstruktur karena e, ini sebagai modal dasar e, untuk menyamakan bagaimana e, bahasa-bahasa visual atau bahasa e, film ataupun bahasa yang diproduksi dalam konteks dunia seni atau media itu menjadi e, e, se, bahasa yang secara kosakatanya sama. Jadi untuk masuk ke ranah konsep, eh, ranah apa, ke ranah eh, eksperimentasi eh, bagi para partisipan itu dah, sudah tidak kendala lagi setelah mereka melewati itu. Dengan cara eh, mengalami secara struktural, setiap setiap eh, partisipan punya eh, apa, punya logikanya eh, eh, untuk eh, berargumen, mengkritik dan sebagainya. Uh, saya punya metode mengajar yang cukup berbeda Saya, saya me- mengoordinasi sebuah kelas yang saya kasih nama uh, Roman Picisan Dalam kelas itu uh, kami sama-sama belajar tentang apa itu hal-hal remeh uh, Bagaimana kita melihat uh, puisi dalam kehidupan Dan dari memahami hal-hal kecil tersebut Uh, kita akan bisa mengerti secara detail apa yang ada di dalam sesuatu yang terstruktur. Melatih tiap-tiap partisipannya untuk berargumentasi, saling mengkritik dan berargumentasi. Ini ini salah satu metode belajar yang uh, mungkin menjadi salah satu yang khas dari forum lenteng karena setiap partisipan uh, punya apa punya otoritas untuk mengkritik karena karena partisipan yang lain dalam kelas-kelas kami hal yang paling penting uh, untuk dipahami oleh partisipannya adalah um, tidak ada yang instan semua harus dilakukan dengan cara yang sangat intensif walaupun dia membutuhkan waktu yang cukup panjang uh, ini penting buat saya terutama untuk uh, menjadikan uh, semua dari kita sebagai Orang-orang yang yang profesional, yang siap uh, dalam dunia kerja atau apapun uh, untuk memahami dunia dan kehidupan. Hal-hal yang paling saya tekankan dalam dalam setiap kelas-kelas saya adalah uh, menulis dan mengkaji dengan cara yang uh, tidak harus selalu sama dengan cara yang sudah pernah ada uh, di dunia akademik. Tapi semua orang punya semacam kewajiban untuk uh, menuliskan tentang apapun. Pengujian dari apa yang sudah pernah dipelajari dalam seluruh kelas di Formula Lenteng selama 17 tahun adalah dengan praktek-praktek di lapangan. Seperti pameran, uh, itu semua disesuaikan oleh minat dari semua partisipan. Uh, menjadi kurator atau menguratori proyek-proyek yang kita hasilkan. Kemudian uh, juga dalam bentuk... Uh, Festival, kami punya sebuah festival film, uh, dokumenter dan eksperimental film festival yang bernama Archipel, uh, yang kita mulai sejak tahun 2013. Uh, Archipel sendiri mulai diadakan setelah Forum Lenteng berusia 10 tahun. Itu menunjukkan bahwa um, untuk membicarakan sebuah uh, festival film untuk menggaungkan apa makna dari produksi, dari konten, dan dari uh, distribusi sebuah film, uh, kami perlu melakukan penelitiannya selama 10 tahun. Untuk bergabung di Forum Lenteng, para partisipan di sini uh, punya syarat, yaitu mereka harus punya minat kepada sinema dan film. Ini syarat yang penting buat kami karena uh, 
buat kami sinema menjadi unsur yang sangat penting dalam uh, melihat uh, peradaban. Uh, untuk mendirikan sebuah organisasi yang bisa cukup bertahan dan semakin kuat uh, setiap tahunnya, uh, dibutuhkan kesadaran semacam seperti membangun sebuah keluarga dan membesarkan seorang anak. Thank you to Forum Lantang. It was very optimistic ending. Uh, the next contribution is, and the last one is from Janusz Sugar uh, from Budapest, Hungary, who studied uh, in the Department of Sculpture at the Hungarian Academy of Fine Arts in Budapest. During his studies in 1980s, uh, he was actively involved in the exhibitions and performances of Indigo an interdisciplinary art group led by Miklos Erdeli. I think Miklos Erdeli would be uh, also a, a very inspirational figure uh, in art education. There was a book, a small book published by uh, Transit in Hungary uh, that really deplores uh, his uh, amazing and uh, uh, very artistic approaches to, to, to art education. Sugar has participated in national and international exhibitions since mid 1980s. In 1992, he exhibited a Documenta 9 in Kassel, 96 in Manifesta 1 in Rotterdam. He completed ArtsLink residency at the Cleveland Institute of Art in 1994 and uh, <coughs> He, he got a three months fellowship at, uh, at 1999 at Experimental Intermedia in New York. His films were screened in the anthology film archives uh, in New York as example, as one of the places. He resides in Budapest between 1990 and 1995. He was board member of the Balaj Bela Film Studio in Budapest, which was again a very uh, amazing uh, archive and uh, uh, production unit uh, of experimental film in Hungary. In 1994 uh, uh, and 1996, Sugar organized the Meta Forum conference series with Hert Loving and Diana McCarthy. In 1990, he founded with Miklos Peternak the Intermedia Department of the Hungarian Academy of Fine Arts Budapest and he has been teaching art and media theory since 1990s. So please, uh, now we will, uh, we will show the last contribution and I hope to see you uh, next week at the same time, Thursday at four o'clock and I hope it will go technically more smoothly at the beginning that it was today. We will be more experienced and uh, we will start sharply at four o'clock, I hope. Thank you for your attention. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I take off my ma mask, face mask. I just wanted to show you, I mean, this is the object of our time. This is my mask. Stay free, remain free. It's, uh, it's written on it. So, um, Thank you for inviting me, and it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's a very special situation because uh, normally um, a conference is partly a pretext just for coming together and having uh, real time encounters, small talk, cafes, cigarettes, uh, everything, and uh, this uh, this is equally important part. Of, uh, of a conference. Now, in, in a new situation, we, we, we had to deconstruct this situation like uh, many other situations of our everyday and professional life. So, deconstruction has a, has a new, uh, new uh, uh, mm, new meaning uh, in, in our time. My name is Janusz Sugar. I'm an artist and uh, I'm teaching at the Art University. I'm, I'm mentioning this because uh, it's, uh, it's important 
to uh, define the very beginning if, that uh, if, if I'm talking, um, I'm talking from this position because I have this experience at the university uh, experience. With other terms, uh, I'm representing, not alone here in this circle, the so-called academic art, artist education. It's a mm, rather bureaucratic term. Uh, it's, a, it's a completely bureaucratic language. I, uh, I don't really like it because I think uh, this uh, uh, bureaucracy um, invaded our everyday language. But anyway, uh, this is it. And uh, um, if I need to give a, um, a title to this talk, to my contribution, uh, here is my title. As, as you see, it's a slightly uh, changed version of the general title of the of the of the conference. Reforming the formed, reforming, which uh, which uh, which was already formed, and uh, uh, in in this context. What was formed is the, this uh, academic situation and, and we have to find ways how to reform it in, a, in, a, in an era, in a time where both terms, academy, university and, uh, and art, art education um, are very problematic and uh, and uh, they are questioned in, in in many different ways in 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 uh, everywhere the, uh, the academy is is questioned in general like uh, science professional science is is questioned in many ways we we live in a so called post truth post factual uh, era and uh, and in, uh, in 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 such a setup, the academic freedom, the autonomy of universities are not really welcomed or at least uh, questioned uh, everywhere. And uh, we face the same problem somehow concerning art, because uh, our modernistic. A modernistic uh, art notion based on something which is uh, which which might be invisible for uh, for uh, for for many this is the growth the growth which is the the uh, basement of uh, basic of the foundation of the market uh, capitalism if there is no growth th there is a crisis and this notion of growth uh, uh, invaded uh, um, our, our life in, in, in many sense, our, um, uh, our relationship with each other and uh, in, in many areas. And this growth is the, is the support of those institutions we, we like to keep and we rely on museums, galleries, and, and, and um, art market, um, publications, everywhere, uh, everything concerning uh, art. And of course, not just art. And uh, we are in an, uh, we are in a, in an era where uh, multiple crises uh, are around us. I don't have to count them, but everyone knows financial crisis, uh, political crisis, ecological crisis, and uh, if we would like to um, uh, survive as uh, humanity, and if we would like to keep at least some of our um, um, uh, best achievements, we, we have to change many things. We have to change our way of thinking, especially uh, we have to change our thinking 
or our idea about growth. And uh, it could change our uh, notion of art. Um, um, and and uh, uh, we, we can see uh, some signs of it in, uh, in this pandemic situation. Because uh, 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 the businesses are not working, uh, there is no public, uh, there are no exhibitions, and uh, we are desperately seeking new forms um, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, encounter with the, with the public. But it's not so easy because uh, art uh, is uh, primarily based on, uh, on real-time um, um, uh, encounters, real-time uh, relationships. We can learn lots of, uh, if, uh, lots of things in, in books and slideshows and reproductions, but the, 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 the real uh, 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 perception of an artwork, either a, whatever, a, a, either a theater piece or a visual art piece or um, etc. Uh, we, we have to be present. We have to be there, and uh, and we have uh, to have uh, institutions uh, for such uh, such um, encounters. At the beginning of, of this short talk, I mentioned my position. Uh, um, uh, going back to this, uh, uh, I, I would like to add a, a further element. Um, I feel myself living and, and working in, in Hungary uh, like uh, being in a laboratory. Uh, what is a laboratory? A laboratory uh, is, uh, is a place where, uh, I mean, in this uh, um, definition, um, uh, where um, some larger scale events can be uh, researched in a small scale situation. So uh, uh, living in, in Hungary, which is one of those uh, existing uh, oxymorons, the so-called illiberal uh, democracies, I feel the problems of those two above mentioned term um, in a very strong way, very uh, everyday way. Um, um, let's speak about the academic situation. Uh, um, there is an um, ongoing process in, in Hungary to privatize all the universities. Um, it, it could be, uh, I mean, in itself it doesn't have any, um, any, any value, I mean, um, uh, lots of universities uh, uh, around the world are, are, are pri privately founded universities, but uh, it's, it's a rather different concept here in, in Hungary. Uh, uh, um, pri uh, uh, privatization of universities doesn't mean uh, give some uh, or en enhance the uh, independence or the autonomy of the university, just the opposite. Uh, um, um, there is a, a um, foundation with some members above the, uh, the, the, the usual heads of the universities, the deans and the directors, and uh, they, uh, they have a, a full power so uh, prob uh, practically, they are the real leaders, the uh, uh, universities. Um, um, in, in Hungary, uh, if my information is right, there are six universities which are not yet uh, uh, privatized, and those are mainly the so-called art universities. Uh, uh, dance, uh, music, uh, uh, visual art, which is uh, ours, where I'm, I'm, I'm working. And recently, um, mm, um, maybe you've heard about there, there was, a, or there, still there is, a huge protest of the students of the theater and, and film uh, university of Budapest, because uh, uh, they, uh, 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 I mean, the, the, the government uh, changed the, the university's legal status, 
privatized in such a way that uh, uh, without any kind of dialogue or uh, negotiations with, uh, with uh, uh, professors, students, other teachers of, of the university. And that's why the extremely brave uh, students of the Theater and Film Academy, they occupied the university. Uh, you can imagine, it's, it's a rather big thing in, in a country like, uh, like uh, Hungary. They occupied their university, and uh, which is, from this point, what I'm talking about, uh, is even more important. They introduced something which they called Teaching Republic. Teaching Republic. Uh, I, I will go back uh, to this. And by the way, uh, uh, um, I, I will give, uh, give out some uh, um, uh, Word documents uh, um, um, containing all the references and, uh, and, uh, and, and links uh, uh, about things I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning. Okay, I, I, I spoke about laboratory and, uh, and uh, academic situation, and uh, I, I, I don't think that I have to uh, speak too much about the situation of art in, in Hungary. Uh, it's, it's another issue uh, which, uh, which, which follows the, the similar model. Uh, I don't want to go into the details because it's, uh, it's too complicated and it's not uh, the, the, the topic of, of this talk, but I, I try to give you some, uh, some, uh, some, some links, or you can ask me later, of course. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just mentioning that, uh, um, that uh, culture politics, uh, um, uh, control of art, um, uh, censorship, and the worst thing, uh, self-censorship, and the censorship of the, uh, the, the, um, the, the middleman um, are, are back in, in Hungary. So uh, the, the big cultural institutions like uh, museums um, 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 uh, and, 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 and similar ones, they are really very much controlled and, uh, and uh, um, they don't really have, they don't really want to show any kind of critical uh, um, positions um, or, or, or critical art or let's say uh, um, problematic art or, or something which people have to uh, un un understand and 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 uh, and, uh, and and think about and um, and uh, and somehow uh, interpret. Uh, just uh, in, uh, the, the the general attitude is just being very very transparent. And, and simple and, and, and no politics, no, um, uh, no um, uh, critical uh, position. Um, the general question, uh, going back to the academic situation, why do we need um, 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 academic art education? Um, it's, it's not just a rhetorical question, it's, it's a practical question, because uh, if, uh, if, if we look around, uh, we, we find that uh, uh, all the mat materials, all the equipments uh, uh, are available for everyone. So uh, um, there, there is not such a difference between a professional video equipment and the so-called consumer electronics, and uh, and we all know about uh, very good movies which were made on on uh, on a, with a with a telephone or a, with a um, um, medium uh, digital camera and etc. And uh, and uh, plus people can find all the tutorials, uh, all the necessary information uh, of of using. Uh, those equipments uh, on the internet, in bookstore, in libraries, uh, everywhere, and uh, this is the same with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with other areas, with uh, 
they can, people can find all the necessary knowledge if they, if they uh, um, need it. And, uh, and uh, uh, this raises the question, uh, what can we offer? At, at, a, at an art university. If we, if we, if we see it in a very, uh, uh, let's say, a dry way, we can say that on one hand we can offer a kind of uh, existential safe heaven. You know, it's, uh, the posi nowadays the position of a student is a very safe position um, uh, from the point of existence. Because uh, in the spirit of uh, a division of labor, a university degree could, uh, could uh, direct a, a kind of uh, career path with, uh, with uh, BA, MA, DLA, et, uh, et cetera. And of course, a university could, uh, could, uh, could offer uh, high level uh, uh, knowledge and uh, and uh, and uh, professional equipments and uh, uh, together a kind of a, a playground and uh, maybe the third aspect that a university education could offer uh, generational um, uh, contacts relationships cooperations and uh, and and some help to the uh, emergent, uh, emergents and uh, um, this was a question, <laughs> of course, this is the question for, for, for all of us. And I think, uh, and it's not just an easy position, I think that we, we cannot give a general answer for this. I, I think uh, very seriously that we can, think, uh, we can give answers ju just particular questions. And this is my experience, because uh, at the beginning I mentioned that I'm teaching at the Art University of, 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 of Hungary. Uh, but uh, uh, my teaching uh, experience, uh, I, I never wanted to teach, I never had such an ambition, I never wanted to go to the uh, a a academy, I was completely happy with my ar ar artistic activity. But uh, uh, parallel with the political changes, which was a, a rather similar situation like now, uh, in 89-90, the that time students, they, they started the revolt against the that time leadership of the university. And, uh, and uh, uh, it, it was a long, longer process. And uh, at, at the end, they invited some, some new, uh, uh, new people. And I was one among us. And, uh, and uh, I, I, later, or in other situation, I can explain our, 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 our daily practice, but uh, to, to, to cut a very long and, long and, com uh, and complicated story short, I would say uh, that we did something which, uh, which could be defined by, those, by that term I mentioned earlier, teaching republic. Because uh, one of our f uh, major or most important decisions was that we uh, didn't want to uh, uh, follow that uh, traditional um, uh, the tradition uh, um, um, called uh, master classes. We don't have master classes. We we have a, a bunch of uh, um, 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 teachers, very experienced uh, um, uh, people. And uh, uh, their, their um, um, topics and their um, um, courses, they, they are overlapping. So the student doesn't have to choose um, um, a, a master. And, uh, and uh, I, I think uh, this, uh, um, I, I would close this short uh, um, contribution with this, that uh, maybe we have to think about the, the uh, uh, possibilities of, uh, of teaching republics uh, um, a, a new kind of uh, um, academic artistic education in the time of crisis, pandemic, and, uh, and, uh, and, and political populism. Um, because uh, we, we have to defend our, our values. And, uh, and uh, I, I think art uh, could play a very important uh, role in this, 
maybe not uh, in, the, in the traditional way, or not just the traditional way, but in different new ways. And uh, to find those new ways, uh, the universities, the uh, university academic art education could be uh, a larger laboratory. Thank you very much. And as a gesture, I take my mask. Thanks to Jano Sugar to introducing this uh, beautiful uh, notion of teaching republic and uh, it, it was the, the last contribution of today. Uh, I would like to thank mainly to all participants, but the, the same way I would like to thank uh, to all listeners and viewers that follow us. And uh, I would like to remind you or invite you for the next session that will happen on Thursday at uh, four o'clock, where uh, there will be cont first there will be contributions by Olaf Nikolai from Academy of Fine Arts in Munich, Alexandra White, Applied Art Academy in Prague. Dimitri Vilensky, member of Chtoliele group, who founded uh, an art school, and Pavel Bichler, who uh, teaches thought at uh, Manchester uh, School of Art, and uh, actually now he's uh, visiting professor at AVU uh, in Prague. So uh, this will be programmed for the next week. Uh, their contributions, first start, we will start with the contributions, and in the second round, uh, there will be a short discussion with invited guests. Thank you and see you next week. <laughs>